oh my God, freak out everybody because your joints are misaligned, your bones are in the wrong place, your body's basically a Jenga tower, and if you don't get realigned by the magic wizard with his magic wizard hands, then your nerves are going to explode, your liver's going to have some kind of, I don't know, fucking hepatitis. Why not? Because, you know, nerves and, I don't know, joints are out of place and stuff. Hashtag subluxation? I don't know. Let's get into it. So today we're gonna to be talking about, are your joints misaligned? Are your joints actually in the wrong place? Is that a real thing? Why do people say this? Why do healthcare providers actually say this? Is it a real thing, okay? Uh, we're gonna just crash. I know we're gonna crush some, some dreams here. We're gonna piss some people off, but I'm gonna tell you like it is, and hopefully this is a message of hope so that you cannot be tricked into getting treatment that you do not need for a thing that does not exist. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm Dr. Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness. This is the Health or Hoax podcast. You can find the video form of the podcast under the Shapeshift Wellness YouTube channel. And of course, the audio is searchable under Health or Hoax. For Shapeshift Wellness, I help people with chronic pain and recurring injuries to reclaim the active life that they deserve through a lifestyle modification like exercise, meditation, good sleep, nutrition, and generally just being a fucking badass. So if you want to get your life back and stop living in chronic pain and you want to stop having the same injury over and over, book a free call with me. It's free. We can talk. I can give you some direction and hopefully we can come up with a plan to end this thing once and for all and get you back to that life that you deserve to be living. All right, let's get into the episode. All right, let's start with the theories. Okay, so why do some healthcare providers think that your joints are misaligned? Let's be honest. I'll call out my profession. Oh God, here we go. Chiropractors will tell you that your joints are misaligned. Okay, your joints are in the wrong place. They shouldn't be there. They're misbehaving. They're, they should, they do got to go back where they belong. And if they don't, they're going to like compress nerves. They're going to impede your vital, <laughs> vital life force, whatever the fuck that means. And it's going to lead to all kinds of issues everywhere in the body because they'll tell you that the, oh God, the nervous system is the like master of all the rest of the body and everything else in the body depends on the nervous system, which is not True, by the way, think about it, think about it, go ahead, organ transplants. How can you have an organ transplant if we don't hook up the nerves? That's right. When we give you a heart transplant, your heart is not hooked up to electricity because it has its own supply of electricity. So it does not have to be hooked up to your nerves, which is good because otherwise we couldn't do it. And the other one, I don't know, a liver transplant. We do not hook the liver up to your nervous system. It relies on endocrine signaling. Okay, that is a chemical signaling through the bloodstream and it tells your liver what to do. Your new liver, I should say, your transplanted liver. So it may not function as well. I, I would give you that. It's not going to function as well if, as if it was hooked up to the nervous system, but it does function. It keeps you alive. So the nervous system does not control absolutely everything. Everything in the body is dependent on basically everything else in the body. It's kind of cool like that. Anyway, so chiropractors and osteopaths, a long time ago, they would tell you basically that your joints are misaligned and then we've got these holes through the spine that the nerves and arteries and things like that go. And if the bones are in the wrong place, it's going to compress the nerves or compress the arteries. That's going to impede the nerves from firing or the arteries from carrying blood flow. And that if that happens, then wherever those nerves or arteries go, you're going to have trouble either pain or disease to an organ or something like that. But here's the trouble is that <laughs> there is really good reason to question, to seriously question the idea of joints having a correct place in the first place. So first of all, if they're misaligned, then where is the correct place? Hmm? So First of all, a joint is meant to move, all right? A joint is meant to move. Oh, and by the way, before I launch into this, I will get to the cases where, yes, there are a few cases where your joints can be misaligned. That does exist for some people. I will tell you who those people are, but I'll tell you right now, it's very few people. 
okay? And it's serious, all right? But for most of us, joints, by definition, are things that move, right? It is where two bones meet, and they move. Now, I know, I know, I know, there are joints that don't move. Fine. But for the joints that we're manipulating, right, like chiropractors and osteopaths and et cetera, if we're trying to adjust a joint, it's a movable joint, right, by definition. So how do we determine the health of a movable joint? Is it based on its static resting position? Or is it based on its ability to move through a full range of motion? I would suggest it's the latter, that a joint is a movable area where two bones meet. And therefore, by definition, if it is the movable area between two bones, then whether or not it is a healthy joint is entirely dependent on, can it move through the range of motion that we expect of that joint? If not, not a healthy joint. If so, healthy joint, right? So the trouble is that chiropractors will tell you, oh, this bone is right rotated or left laterally flexed or flexed or extended or whatever. Basically what they're saying is that the static resting position, when you feel like you're in your resting position, that this joint is slightly rotated to the right. Okay. But again, if we wanted a useful test for the health of that joint, I would say, well, fine. It, it prefers to rest a little to the right. All right, that's its resting position. So it doesn't rest in a truly 100% neutral position. Does that matter? I don't know. Can you rotate all the way to the right? Can you rotate all the way to the left? Can you bend to the left? Can you bend to the right? Can you bend forward? Can you bend backwards? If yes, and none of those things are painful, then I do not give a shit if your resting position is slightly off to the right because you have the full functionality of the joint. The joint can do, it can do the functions that a joint is supposed to do. So who cares? The other aspect of that is that every body is asymmetrical, right? uh, Chiropractors are going to lose their mind when they find out that we've only got one liver and it's off to the right. You know what I mean? Like I, they should remember this, right? You just use your basic logic in chiropractic school. It's nearly four years of education and we have all the basic sciences and we dissect cadavers. We should know that the, that, you know, the left side of the lung um, has two lobes and the right side has three lobes and we've got a liver on one side and we got a spleen on the other side. And there's all kinds of asymmetries throughout the entire body. So why are we so obsessed with being 100% symmetrical inside and out every day in all of our movements. It doesn't make any sense. And besides, a joint that stays, right? Have you ever heard that? You go to a chiropractor and they they adjust you and they say, oh, take it easy. We want to make sure that the adjustment stays or that it sets. What the fuck does that mean? Do I want my joints to fuse? Are we trying to fuse my joints in neutral? It doesn't even make sense. The whole point of a joint is to move. Can you move it? If yes, healthy joint. If no, unhealthy joint, right? Easy, simple. Now, the next thing is really going to piss off some chiropractors and physical therapists and massage therapists and any kind of body worker, and that is when we study our ability to palpate, meaning feel with our fingertips, the position of joints or the stiffness of joint segments or the location of bony landmarks or tendons or muscles, We do terribly. We do really bad. You would think that chiropractors and physical therapists and massage therapists have magic fingers with little spidey sensors and they can tell where your knots are and where your tension is and which side is painful. And to some degree, we might have a little bit better sensory uh, abilities than the average Joe. Totally. But there is a finite limit 
to the abilities of our fingers because we have a finite limit to our two-point discrimination. That's our ability to tell one point from another, right? We only have a certain amount of sensitivity that the human organism actually allows. So we can only max that out. And while I think that we should try to max out our ability to feel stuff with our hands, when we actually study it and we line up a hundred uh, manual therapists of various kinds, and they've done, the, they've done this with chiropractors, they've done this with physical therapists, they've done this with massage therapists, and it doesn't matter who you line up, if you line up a hundred of them and you tell them all to take a magic marker and draw on the body just a dot, where is the biceps tendon? Where is the PSIS? Where is this bony landmark or that muscle or whatever? We cannot agree on it. None of us agree, right? Which means that half of us are wrong and half of us are right. And are there people who are right? Are they right or are they just lucky? We don't know, okay? Now, I'm painting a really bad picture here of how um, our sensory abilities work. And it's, it's, not, it's not that bad. It's not like we're totally guessing. But we're kind of guessing. We're, we're kind of, like, a little bit guessing, right? We're not a hundred percent sure. That's for sure. Like at, at, at best, you know, with some structures, it's easy. Like the electronon, easy. That's right there. I'm a hundred percent of people who have had an anatomy class should be able to identify where the electronon is. So it, it, it also depends on the structure that we're talking about. All right. But some structures are just not palpable. You can't feel them. And if, if your chiropractor tells you that he can feel your psoas tightness, um, he's, he, he can't. He's hallucinating. He's, he probably thinks he can, but he's hallucinating it, okay? So our palpation is limited. We are not as good at it as we say. So even if you were misaligned, we probably couldn't feel it anyway. In fact, there's one really, really devastating study um, that I, I can r- recall now. I'm, I'm remembering it um, live on air, and I'm basically what they did is they had a hundred chiropractors. I, I don't know. I don't remember the number, but they had a bunch of chiropractors line up and they had a, um, a spot, a, a person with a spinal fusion in, in their spine. And they asked the chiropractors to identify the level of the spine where the fusion was located. And we weren't even close. We and we're pr- sitting there pressing on the the uh, joints and trying to feel for like, is this one stiff? No. Is this one stiff? No. Is this one stiff? Oh, that one's stiff. That must must be surgically fused. Well, guess what? We had an actual surgical fusion, fusion surgically, and we couldn't even find that with our magic hands. So seriously doubt the ability of your therapist's hands to magically tell you, like little x-ray fingers, what's in your spine. Because we're kind of guessing. Okay, so hopefully you believe me when I say that joints are not misaligned. Now, real quick, I will, uh, now is a good time for me to tell you the cases in which your joints are misaligned. Because there are a few examples of times where your joints are 100%, they are misaligned. Um, The most obvious of which is a fracture, right? If your bones are fractured, they are not aligned. And that is obviously a serious thing that you need to have emergency care to, um, to treat. And you would know it, right? You would know that you have a fracture in most cases, not all cases, but most cases. Uh, the other example is a spondylolisthesis. That is where in the spine, one uh, vertebral level slides forward or backwards um, on top of the vertebra below. And yeah, that's a legit misalignment there. It's, it's not where it should be, right? That sometimes matters. Sometimes it does not matter. Sometimes they are stable and it doesn't matter. Sometimes it matters a lot because it's slid forward enough that it's compressing on the spinal cord and causing serious nerve damage. Yeah, that matters. That matters a lot. And unfortunately, for some of those people in more severe cases, they might need to have surgery. Um, Other people with less severe cases may need to uh, do exercise in a certain fashion to minimize the risk that their misaligned joints um, are going to have on their body. And so you would want to know that is my point. You would want to know that. 
but even if you knew it, you couldn't fix it without surgery. You can't just put it back into place because it's just going to slide around. If it's unstable, it's just going to keep sliding around. So you can't put it back into place because it'll just keep going out forever unless you have surgery. So uh, the other, uh, another example, there are many examples that I can think of. Obviously a dislocation is the, is a, another big one. If you fully dislocate your shoulder, you need to have that put back in. Um, fun, weird fact, uh, chiropractors are not licensed to, to do that. So they're the ones telling you that they can put bones back into place, but we're not even licensed to reset um, a full dislocation. So that's weird. Right. And then one last example that I'll give you here is a scoliosis. Um, a scoliosis, your joints are rotated and bent to the side in a way that is at uncommon and abnormal. And yeah, you could say that they're sort of in the wrong place. They're sort of misaligned, right? They're not straight or they don't have the appropriate curvature or they have excess curvature in the wrong direction. Fine. That's technically not a perfect textbook neutral, but it depends on how severe the scoliosis is. If it's less than 10 degrees, we don't even call it a scoliosis. We just call it a convexity and it does not matter at all. If it's over 40 degrees, then it really matters. You probably are going to have surgery and that's because it can impact the heart and lungs. It can cause serious cardiopulmonary um, health consequences in your life that are devastating. So a severe scoliosis matters a lot. Most people are not severe. If you're severe, you would know it when you were a child, right? Because you're going to grow into it like that. You're probably getting a brace when you're a kid to try and prevent it. Um, so in those cases, yes, it matters quite a bit. But when we study those misalignments, so to speak, those scoliosis, we find that there's not a strong correlation. And sometimes there's no correlation, depending on which study you're looking at, um, between a scoliosis and pain. So you can have a scoliosis, even a pretty significant moderate scoliosis and not have pain associated with it. So a scoliosis is not a life sentence to having pain all the time forever as long as you live. Okay, so now we've covered joints being in the wrong place, right? Sometimes there are a few isolated circumstances where your joints can be in the wrong place, but most of the time they're just fine, right? Your joints are, I mean, just think about it. Think about it. If your joints could easily go out of place, or let's rephrase it. If I could, with my hands, with a chiropractic adjustment, with the very little force that it takes to do one, if I could put your joints, quote, back into place with that much force, then you would think that the amount of force that's like in a car accident or playing contact sports like football or rugby, you would think that people who play football, all of their joints would be basically dislocated. They would be fractured and dislocated constantly. But but it's just not the case. And the, and the reason is because the ligaments that hold your joints together and hold them in place are very, very strong. So I, I can no more easily put your joints back into place than football would create somebody's joints going out of place, right? And football has way way higher forces that go through your joints than you would see in like a chiropractic uh, joint manipulation. All right. So next up muscle imbalances. So, okay, fine, 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 fine. Maybe my joints aren't in the wrong place, but this area is stiff, right? And we need to loosen it up. Ah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So let's talk about muscle imbalances. So maybe instead of joints being in the wrong place, we just, now we just have muscle imbalances. Honestly, that's a whole episode, um, but essentially the idea is that certain muscles are short and tight um, and overactive, and then the opposite muscle groups are long and weak, right? They're stretched out and they're weak. And um, that's it's just not the case. Uh, when we've studied this kind of stuff in general, we don't see it, it, this comes from an idea of reciprocal inhibition. That has never been shown to exist. In fact, we see the opposite in laboratory experiments. When you contract one muscle group, the opposing muscle group actually becomes more active, not less active. So we, we see that the idea of muscle imbalances has been very strongly challenged in existing scientific literature. So the idea of it being stiff is a big maybe, maybe 
for some people sometimes. And then we go back to the palpation thing of like, well, even if it is stiff, will I even be able to accurately feel that it's stiff? And again, that's a big maybe. It really depends on the area, how stiff it is, and which therapist you have, and do they have good actual sensation in their hands. Um, and if all of those things are kind of average, then it's tough. It's, it's really tough. So is it stiff? Well, I don't know. And besides, even if it is stiff, when we study the correlation of stiffness in your muscles or the perceived uh, feeling of stiffness, what you would describe as stiffness, uh, that does not always correlate with actual stiffness. And actual stiffness does not always correlate with pain. So we have this big mess of things where structure does not um, 100% relate to your symptoms or predict your symptoms or predict injury. And well, why is that? Because for the last time, everybody, you're not a fucking machine. You're a human being, right? You're not a machine. So obviously we can't treat you like a machine. In just a second, I want to tell you about the things that actually do matter. Okay. So if you're not going to be worried about joint misalignments and muscle imbalances, then what aspects of your health can you get a regular quote tune up or what aspects of your health should you get regularly evaluated or actually put effort into trying to change? I'll tell you that in just a second, but Hey, real quick, if you've been thrown through the ringer and you've seen a million chiropractors, physical therapists, you know, osteopaths, massage therapists, acupuncture, body workers, Reiki healers, you've seen everybody and they're not really helping you with your chronic pain or your recurring injuries. The best thing that you can do is have a solid plan. You need a plan and you need accountability. That's the biggest part of rehab. And for some terrible reason, that's the one thing that most chiropractors, physical therapists, massage therapists, you name it, even medical doctors, are not really giving you. They're not giving you accountability, and they're not giving you a solid plan, a detailed plan for you to follow. I can give you a plan. I can help you with chronic pain. I can even do that virtually. If you want to work with me one-on-one, you can book a free discovery call anytime. Okay, now let's talk about the things in your fitness that do really matter. So if you want something to measure and track and improve and have you know a checkup on on a regular basis, let's talk about things that matter. It, we're talking about cardiovascular health, strength, right? Those, I mean, those are the big ones. That's it. If you're worried about your physical health, it's how are you moving? Do you have good cardiovascular health? So that's things like your VO2, which your uh, ventilatory threshold is just a, a measure of your ability to get oxygen to your tissues. Your heart rate variability, which is sort of a measure of your autonomic nervous, nervous system's ability to uh, regulate itself. Um, so your cardiovascular health, right? Those things really matter. So you should improve that. How do you do that? How do you do that? You exercise. It's not sexy, but you just got to do it consistently forever. That's it. It's not magic. It's not sexy. It's not fancy. It's not glamorous, but go on a walk every day for the rest of your life, right? That's how you do it. Uh, The other aspects are things like strength, muscle strength, so that you don't easily tear your muscles. Bone mass density, that comes with strength training and picking up heavy weights so that you don't fall and get a fracture and die because you had a fracture, right? That's terrible. The, I, I don't want to get into it, but with elderly women, that's one of the number one ways that they go out, right, is they fracture their hip and most of them die within a year. My granny, my poor, I love my granny. Granny, rest in peace. I love you so much. But, you know, she, she didn't lift weights. She she didn't have strong bones. And if she had, then I, I, I can't help but wonder if, if she would have had that fall that fractured her her hip and ultimately led to ending her life if she hadn't if she had been picking up heavy weights if she had been strength training for her whole life or at least had picked it up later in life cuz it's not like you have to it's not like you're it's too late oh no it's too late i'm old now i can't do it no now's the time to start today today doesn't matter what age start picking up heavy weights Get that bone mass density so you don't fracture and um, have an early demise because of it, right? Those things 
matter, right? In addition to that, we would look at things like balance, right? That's another one. You're falling. Why are you falling? How's your balance? And uh, muscle endurance. And these, these are things that have been linked to injury, to pain, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we want to improve those things. So when's the last time you went to a physical therapist or chiropractor and they actually tested your maximum strength or your, your VO2, um, heart rate variability, your muscle endurance, your balance, and, and measured it? And told you objectively, like, that's good. You, you have very good balance. Or no, it's not good. You have terrible balance. And we, <laughs> we need to improve that. Uh, that stuff matters. Now, lastly, let's wrap it up. What do you do instead, right? So big picture, obviously, if you're not going to be focusing on joint alignment and muscle imbalances, the stuff that you're going to do instead is focus on cardiovascular health, strength, balance, sleep, good nutrition, stress management, that's what matters. And ultimately, well, what did I just do? I just painted the picture of uh, your whole life holistically, right? Looking at you as a whole person. So what do you do? What do you want to get a tune-up on? Well, how about tune up your nutrition? How about tune up your sleep? How about tune up your stress management? How about we tune up the things that actually have a dramatic impact on your overall health, on your chances of getting injured, your chances of getting disease, your chances of being disabled or having pain, right? That's cardiovascular health, that's strength, that's sleep, at least seven good hours of sleep, right? Healthy food, real food that it doesn't come in a box and doesn't come with a, a list of ingredients, not alcohol, right? Alcohol is just absolutely toxic for you. Um, so if you're going to drink, please drink as little as possible. Um, obviously, smoking is just death. Uh, smoking is just 100%. That's just death. Um, I, I'm, it still amazes me in uh, 2023 that people are smoking and vaping is not better, by the way. It, I mean, maybe a little bit, but it's still fucking terrible for you. So it just blows my mind that people are still doing this kind of stuff. So that's what you do instead. You focus on your life holistically, biopsychosocial, right? The biology, your mental health, your social life, everything. That's what you do. You got to come up with a solid plan and you got to see it through and you got to be committed. That's what makes a difference right? Not getting your joints misaligned or realigned rather, not going to the chiropractor and putting your bones back into place. That doesn't do what you think it does. I, w I was almost going to say it doesn't do anything, but that's not true. It does do something, but it doesn't do what you think it does. It does something very, very different, right? It does not put your bones back into place. All right. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Please, if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, leave a review. Please leave a review. It takes 30 seconds and it makes a huge difference to me. If you're listening to this on YouTube, hit the like, hit the subscribe. It takes 10 seconds and it makes my life so much better. But more importantly, it makes all the other people with chronic pain and recurring injuries and misinformation about their health that is actually making them worse, not better. It makes their lives better. It enriches them and it empowers them to reclaim the active life that they love because knowledge is power. Thank you so much for listening. If you ever want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link is in the bio for a free call. I will see you in the next episode.